Broadcom announced that it was planning to acquire a VMware in May, and since then it's laid out its plans for the company. But can Broadcom be trusted considering its history of killing off companies that it's purchased in the past? And could the EU save VMware from an uncertain fate? Let's dig deeper. Hi, Russell here, Editorial Director of Petri.com in this life and IT consultant in a previous one. So let's have a look at the Broadcom story so far. So when Dell acquired EMC in the early 2000s, they also got VMware as part of the deal. And as part of that acquisition, Dell became a majority stakeholder in VMware. But in May, Broadcom announced its plans to acquire VMware in its entirety. And for those of you who don't know, Broadcom is a very well-known chip maker. But Broadcom has a history of killing off companies that it acquires. For instance, in the past it acquired Symantec's enterprise software and pretty much killed that off, and also CA Technologies. And with this news, in recent months VMware employees have started to publicly say that they're nervous about what's going to happen with the company, and some of them have even already started to jump ship. So here are my three reasons why you should be prepared to say goodbye to VMware. So on-premises virtualization is in decline. If you want to do virtualization, then it's much cheaper to use a solution like Azure Virtual Desktop in the cloud, regardless of whether you're trying to do virtualization on-premises or in the cloud. VMware has its own multi-cloud virtualization solution called Horizon, which runs on top of all the popular cloud platforms. But the problem for VMware is that all of those cloud platforms have their own virtualization solution already. And even if you want to do on-premises virtualization, Windows Server has its own Type 1 hypervisor with Hyper-V. Of course, there's virtualization built into Linux as well. So in some ways, VMware's virtualization products are addressing a problem that doesn't really Really need to be solved. So VMware was just too late to the cloud and it was also too late to adopt a subscription model. And without any innovation happening in its products and with things like Windows 365 virtual desktops and Azure virtual desktops and of course other solutions all innovating, VMware has just basically stayed in the past, very little innovation in its products. So why should I as an enterprise look at that as a solution? And at this stage, there's no way really for VMware to catch up with the market leaders. Now, we already know what Broadcom's plans are for VMware because they kind of laid that out at their investor day in November 2021. And what it plans to do is to trap customers that can't move off of VMware solutions into kind of long-term deals where they're going to increase prices because these companies just won't have a choice but to pay. And all of the other customers, Broadcom is planning to just let them slowly slip away. So there are around 600 customers that Broadcom is going to pursue in that bracket of those that just cannot move away from VMware solutions. And about 100,000 enterprise customers that it's planning just to let go over time. So while we know all this, a week ago, the managing director, I think, of Broadcom announced in a blog post that, of course, while we already know that Broadcom was planning to buy VMware, they kind of said, you know, we're going to support existing customers it's all going to be okay and they really try to soften over probably what is the harsh reality of what Broadcom is most likely to do with VMware's products. So what does all of this mean for you as an IT pro if you're currently using VMware's products? Well of course in the very short term nothing is likely to change. This whole process could take up to a year to complete. Uh, and maybe never if the EU has its way, and I'll come on to that in a minute. But it's likely things like VMware Horizon don't have much of a future because the prices are probably going to be jacked up so high that it's unlikely that new customers are going to come on and start signing long contracts with VMware for this product, for instance. At the end of the day, VMware just wasn't quick enough to move because Microsoft, Google, Oracle, all of them have got in there with their own you know, native cloud solutions and you just don't need VMware Horizon. You know, with Azure Virtual Desktop now, for instance, you can do everything that VMware Horizon does for much cheaper. Nevertheless, you know, I do think that VMware products are going to stay around in some capacity. Some of them may be killed off, of course. Some of them will be kept alive on life support, depending on how many big enterprises Price customers, Broadcom is able to keep and capitalize the income on those existing products. 
And enterprises are gradually moving towards software as a service and platform as a service solutions. They don't want to have to manage something like VMware Horizon on top of an existing cloud provider. They just want to have everything managed for them and just to have the end product delivered to them. But having said all of that, VMware could still be saved because it's reported that the EU is planning to engage in a lengthy antitrust case against Broadcom because of competition concerns. If this case goes ahead, it could drag out this acquisition for up to a year. And of course, the EU could rule against Broadcom ultimately. But I think this is the lesson for all IT companies, well, all companies, in fact, you know, you have to move quickly. Microsoft has been very successful at moving quickly into the cloud with Azure, of course, and Microsoft 365. They were able to transition their business to the cloud quickly. They were able to also bring security in line, which they've done a really good job with. And it's all about moving quickly. Microsoft, Accenture have been able to do that over this two year COVID period and really successfully transform their business. But you know, companies, VMware, IBM come to mind as well, just not able to move quickly enough. One thing though that I hope that they don't kill off is a VMware Workstation Pro, because it really is the best desktop virtualization solution. I've tried all of them, Client Hyper-V, uh, Oracle VirtualBox, and I always come back to Workstation Pro. It's just the best if you're a developer or a sysadmin, for whatever reason, you need a fully virtualized desktop. You know, all the integrations you get with Windows, Linux, it just works beautifully and nothing else matches it in my opinion. So Broadcom, please don't kill off Workstation Pro. So what do you think about what's happening with VMware? Is this VMware's own fault? Do you think that VMware, if the EU were to save it, for instance, could potentially still catch up with Microsoft and Amazon and anybody else who's providing these kind of virtualization solutions? Please let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe. And on the screen now, you can see two more videos which you might find useful. That's it from me today and I'll see you next time.